Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayami Babakama Daf Samach Vav. We are holding on the Amad Aleph, four lines off the top of the Amad. Ad Kan Loi Pliki. So let's just recap for a moment. In yesterday's Daf, Rabbi Loa tells us if one steals a, a small young animal, a tle, a sheep, and it turns into an ayel, it graduates into a ram under his watch, or a calf turned into an ox. It's called a shino, it's a drastic change. And the effect of this change is as follows. Typically when a ganav steals an animal and does tvicha and mechira, he either shechts it or he sells it, he pays arba of a chamisha four or five times as much. However, without the tvicha or mechira element, the ganav will pay back a kefal, right? He does double payment. Question. He stole it as a small calf, and now it's a big ox. He does tvicha and mechira. Does he pay the arba v'chamisha or not? Rabbi Allah tells us no, because there was a shino, a drastic change that this animal underwent, in which case the ganav in effect was kaina it, to the extent that the, the animal now identifies with him, it relates to him, and anything done to this animal now, like tvicha and mechira, doesn't relate back to the first owner, in which case it does not trigger arba v'chamisha payment. Whereas Rabbi Hanina disagreed, it remains uh, in the past, it still maintains its former identity, it relates to the former owner, in which case the Tvicha and Mechira is considered like directed at the first owner and it exacerbates the, the, the fevery and it triggers above Hamish. Okay, so that's the question. Shinoi of this type, change, transformation. Does that affect the halacha of Arbaa Vachamisha or not? Okay, that was yesterday's suit. So that's the more four lines off the top. Ad kan pligi. Now, it seems that the machlekes between these two shitas is merely Ella Damar Savar Shinu Kaina. One shita holds that the drastic change affects the whole status. It is now considered the Ganav's animal, right? To the extent that there's no Arbaa Vachamisha. Mar Savar in Shinu Kaina. The other shita disagrees. It still maintains its former status. It still relates to the former owner, which case Abrava Hamisha will get triggered by Yitvichol Mechir. Okay, but all agree, you, you know, the Ganav is somewhat liable. He pays the Kefal, right? Based on which value? Former value or current value? Ava Linian Shlumi, when it comes to setting the, the fees, setting the value, which value do we work with? Former or current? All seem to agree that whatever he will pay, let's say the kefal, it's based on its former value. When he, uh, when he actually stole the animal, diktani, because the um, the uh, the halacha was said, right? The uh, the the, the brice, right? Uh, that Reb Chanina quoted, right? Said mishalim. It's all based on the value of the animal at the time of the Geneva. Right? But that's inconsistent with Rav in yesterday's daf, who tells us that when it comes to the extra penalty payments, it's all about current value. It seems to be a refutation on Rav, Dama Rav, Karen. Yeah, the principle is reckoned based on former value. The value at the time of the Geneva, Mishalim. But Tashlumi Kevel, the extra payments, but Tashlumi Dalad Behei, that's all about current value. Kish Asamad Abedin. Right? Because, you know, basically now is, is when the Bezdin is uh, crafting this new payment, you work based on current value. And here we say that uh, all payments are based on the value of the animal at the time of the Geneva. Amarava, guess what? It depends what he chooses to pay. So Ghana pays Tulaim, he'll pay the actual sheep. I mean, he'll buy a sheep and pay it back. So that is reckoned, Kedemikara, based on the value of the sheep at the time of the Geneva. Because basically, he says, look, I stole a sheep, here's a sheep back. Okay, pretty fair. But Domim Kishel Achshav. Whereas if he chooses to pay, you know, money instead of the actual animal, so that's reckoned with current value. He's responsible, uh, you know, to pay the higher price if it went up, 
since then, okay, but when it comes to actually paying back an animal, he can say, look, he can claim, I took an animal, here's, here's your animal back. So therefore, he doesn't have to add, despite the fact that the animal that he stole today is worth way more. It doesn't matter, because I took a tle, here's a tle back. Amarab. This whole discussion regarding a tle turning into an ayel, an eagle graduating into a shirt, the reason why there's a dispute is because it's a shina de mimela. It happened on its own. It's a natural, you know, progression. But a shina biodaim, something which the Ganav actually does. He takes a piece of raw lumber and fashions it into a desk, right? Amarab, a shina koina. This type of shina certainly is koina. It makes it the Ganavs, in which case he doesn't have to repay, you know, the actual material that he took. We allow him to pay back value, to compensate with money. This idea of Shini Koina is very well rooted. Ksiva, it's based on a Pasek, a Tanina, and also based on a Mishnah. Ksiva, where's the Pasek? Return the item that you stole. Mata Asher Gazal. Why add this, you know, expression Asher Gazal? Obviously, you know, you're going to pay what you stole. Im Ke'en Gazal. So we learn like this. If the item that you that you stole still looks like it did when when you stole it you have to return the actual material if it underwent a drastic change it looks like something else it was crafted into a piece of furniture then you're not responsible to pay the actual material but you don't have to you know uh, disassemble the furniture rather you just pay value you just pay him up for what he took now we have a mission as well he stole wood, he turned into utensils, into furniture, tzemer, he stole wool, vasem begadim, formed them into material, into begadim, mishalm, kshasak zeyla, you only pay according to what, is, what it was worth when you stole it. Inami, another Mishnah, teaching the same idea, which is actually in the halacha of um, Rashi Sagez. So this is the halacha where you give the kain part of the, um, part of the uh, shearings of your, of your sheep. So there it says like this, lehispik litnoi loy, by the time he decided to give it to the kain, it was already died, it was already transformed into something. Your potter. al machine your kain, that clearly tells us that the shinu, that the item undergoes, makes it yours. So, shinu helps you acquire. What about yush? A totally new aspect of, you know, disengagement called yush. So the owner has something and says, look, I lost it, it was stolen from me, I give up. Amri Rabbanu the Nikni. So there as well, the Rabbanu say, if a person steals a car and the owner says, okay, I give up, uh, he relinquishes any, you know, uh, any, 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 let's go of any hope to retrieve his car. It's called Yush. Rabbanu there as well say that, that just like by Shino, it, it generates a Kenyan to the Ghana, the kind of the Ghana sort of acquires it and no longer has to repay the actual item, rather only the value in lieu of the item. Yush as well. Even if there was no drastic change in terms of the physical properties of the item, but if there was Yush, where the owner sort of disengaged, mentally, emotionally disengaged, so there as well, Amir Rabban and Nikra Rabban maintain that the Ghana is Koina and only has to compensate for the actual thing. When it comes to Shino, we know it's Minah Torah, it's a pas. What about Yush? Is it based on the Torah or is it only Takana the Rabbanon to make it easier for the Ghana, you know, to uh, encourage Ghana to do Tshuva? Now that, you know, all they need to do is write a check, it makes it easier. So that's the question. Is it the rice or the Rabon? Why would you say it's the rice? Either rice, so you know why? Perhaps it could be compared to a person finding an Aveda, a lost item. And then we know that Yush works. This one, a person, just like when a person finds something. Love, kivin the meyayish, moramine. Right? So there, certainly once the owner gave up on it, mikami. The Tesel Yadi, right? Before this fellow finds it, the owner gave up. So, so when a person finds it, it's his. Rashi brings up Gemara, Neil Matthias, that, you know, when a person gives up any claim to an item, and the item is not considered an item which is, you know, um, liable to Ashava Saveda. You don't have to go and return it. So we see that Yush works. Yush, yush makes it, you know, affects a disengagement. Hai Nami. So perhaps the same thing with the Gazlan. Kiva the Miyayish Mura. Once the owner gives up, Kani lay. So the Ghana makes a Kenyan. 
Al Makani. So based on this, the answer is yes. Just like Aveda uh, works, same thing with Gneva. Yush disengages. Oidilma, or you can say, Loi Dami Laveda. That's not a fair comparison to a, a, a lost item that was found. Aveda Hudachi Asa Liyade, Vetera Asa Aveda is totally different because when you got the Aveda, you got it legally. You found it in the street. There was nothing you know, wrong done by getting this item. So then when the owner is Miyayish, okay, it, it, you know, convert, it, it reverts to your ownership. But a Ganav has no right, no right to grab this thing. It came into his possession totally you know, illegally. So maybe you can't compare it to Hashem Asaved. And over here, it's merely Medirabbananu, the Amar Drabbananu. Right? So perhaps over here, it's, it's this whole idea of Yush, creating this transfer of ownership is only Medirabbanan. And the reason is, the Amar Rabbanan, Nikon Rabbanan, say that the Ganav should be kind of through Yush, to make it easier, to do Teshuva, to encourage Teshuva. Rashi says three lines from the bottom. Otherwise, you know, the Ghana would have to go find the actual item. It makes it very difficult. One encourage Teshuva. So that's the Shaila. Shino, we know, is Kaina. What about Yush? By Aveda, it is Kaina. What about Gzela? Is it Kaina with their Isa? Only with their Abana. So who uh, posed this question? This was Rabba. Rabbi Yisif Amar Rabbi Yisif disagrees. He says, guess what? Yush, Ehinai, Kaina. When it comes to Gneva, Gzela, Yush has no effect whatsoever. I feel the Rabbanon. Even the Rabbanon, it's not yours. Which means to say, go find the actual item and material and return it to the owner. Eisvi Rabbi Yisif the Rabba. So now we have this sort of running machlekes. Rabba wasn't sure. Perhaps Yush is Kaina of Maybe only the Rabbanon. But Yush is Kaina by a Ghana and a Gaza. Whereas Rabbi Yisif vehemently disagrees. There's no Yush factor to speak of whatsoever. Asks Rav Yosef, who says no Yush. The Rabbi who says yes Yush, goes al chametz. We have a Mishnah. A person steals chametz before Pesach. Ve'avr al Pesach, right? And passes through Pesach, and he has the actual bread with him. Can he return the actual bread to the owner? Yeah, I'm a You can tell the owner, yeah, guess what? Here's your shipment of bread that I took. I'm a lawyer. Here's your thing. Right? And Rashi says, it's called Hezek Shein Nikr, even though it's not really something of value any longer because after Pesach it's Asr Bahano, you can't benefit from it but that's the Allah of Hezek Shein Nikar it's not a tangible a visible damage the, the fellow can return the actual item and walk away question is but hi but this item given the Mata Idan Isura once Pesach arrives which makes this thing Asr Vadai Miyayish you know certainly the owner gives up on it he doesn't need it anymore now if you're going to tell me Yush Affects that transformation of ownership, right? It, it, it converts it from Rubens to Shimon's. Am I Amrly? Harishalachal Fanecha, Sakan, Shimon, the Ganav, turn to Ruben after Pesach. Here, take your thing back. It already belongs to Shimon through Yush. Dummy Malia by Yashlumil, he has to repay him proper value. Right? Because again, when Pesach shows up, Ruben, the owner, gave up on it. He had nothing from it. So Shimon is now Kaina. So it's his. And when it comes time to repay his thievery, he wants to do teshuva, he has to compensate the owner. And he can't just say, well, I'll take your thing. It's not his anymore. It belongs to Shimon. And he can't give him back bread, which is worthless. You can only say, if it's, if it's still yours, here's your thing. So even if it's valueless, it's worthless, it's hummus, I have to pay that. But here's your thing. But it's not your thing. It's my thing. I'm kind of because you owe me Yaish. Amr Leh Sarabha responds, No, Kikamina, I only suggested that there is Yush. Kikamina, no, when I said Yush is Koina, that's only by Zem is Yaish, when the victim, Ruben, did Yush. Vizera said, Look, and Shimon had an interest in being Koina. So that affects that sort of transfer between Ruben and Shimon. But hi, but in the case of the Chomets, sure, there's Yush, Zem is Yaish. You know, Ruben gave up on it. But Shimon doesn't need chametz. He has no interest in being kind of the chametz, so it doesn't go over to Shimon. So I agree in this case. Even with Yush, it won't be a Shinoi Rishos. Now I buy Rabba. Now Abayi has Takasha to Rabba. We have a Brayza which says Karbonoi. So one has to ensure that the carbon that it brings is his. Im oilo Karbonoi says the Pasuk. It has to be his. Well, a Gazla as opposed to a stolen animal. What exactly happened? What are the circumstances behind this 
you know, carbon guzzle. Ilay melifnei yush. Always speaking before the owner gave up on it. Lama likra, of course, you don't even need a pasik. Shita, of course it doesn't work. It's a... Uh, it's not my thing. How could I bring somebody else's carbon and credit it to you know to myself? So basically, the Gemara figured at this point that what happened was the Ganav stole an animal, which was not a carbon, and the, the Gazel decided to take this animal and be Magdish and turn it into a carbon. Well, if it's before Yush, of course he can't do that. It's not his to speak of. It's not his to make a carbon. You don't need, you don't need a pasuk for that. Ella love Oh, apparently, Yush already took place, and still we see it doesn't work. Shema mino Yush leikon. You see, Yush has no effect. Amar le Rav. So Rav responded, "Tamech according to you." Okay, how does that? Let's take a look at another brayz. Mishkave v'leya gazel. The brayz is focusing on a pasuk which discusses a person who's tummy. There's up, right? He had an emission, he made him tummy. And if he sits, lies on something, you know, that thing becomes a moishav, a mishkav, it relates to him, it serves him, it has a, a very strong tumor. Okay? Now the Pasuk says mishkavoy. In order for the item to assume this status of a mishkav azov and uh, acquire this very lofty tumor, very high level tumor, it has to have belonged to the azov, it has to be his personal belonging. You can't sit on somebody else's couch and make a tummy. Right? What exactly happened? Are we speaking that the Zav stole some wool, some material, and turned into a couch, turned into a seat? Here it certainly relates to the Zav. It certainly belongs to him because it's a Shini Maisa. Big difference between you and Shini Maisa is a drastic physical material change that the Zav actually did. He took material and turned it into a chant, a seed, of course he's kind, of course it's his, of course he can be a tamma. There's no question. So it must be the gazal, mishkav the That the Pasuk is speaking where he stole somebody else's seat. Right? So somebody else had a you know, chair and Zav took it to him for himself and sat on it. Mishkavoy, but the gazal says that he cannot be a tamma. So that's the case. Let's go back to our story with the carbon. Perhaps we're speaking about a very similar case. The gazal carbon the chavra. You thought he took an ordinary animal and he tried to make it kaddish, and then he ran into all kinds of problems. No, what happened was Ruben owned a carbon. Shimon came and took the actual carbon. According to the second shot in Rashi. So even if there was yush, doesn't matter. Even if yush is kind, it doesn't matter because that's the pasuk. The pasuk is saying, look, you cannot steal somebody else's carbon. Period. Rashi explains that you know once it turns into a carbon, it's sort of relates to Hashem and to the base of Migdash, Hashem's jurisdiction is all-encompassing. You can't take it away from Hashem, right? So even if there was Yush, but it's already a carbon belonging to Reuven, you can't change that status whatsoever. Ezvi Abayi the Rav Yesef. Now comes the Kasha on Rav Yesef, who said, well, if a god of steals, Yush doesn't make any uh, effect. Ezvi Abayi the Rav Yesef. I'm going to prove that Yush has an effect. Even by Geneva. Oyre Balabais. So a balabai is a regular, you know, commoner, a homeowner, not a professional, a tanner, a regular person who has some leathers, some skins. Machshavim tamasim. At what point does it turn into a sort of a utensil, in which case it's susceptible to tumma? A plain piece of skin does not get tumma. It has to have some sort of function, some sort of purpose to be regarded as a utensil. So machshav is enough. As soon as the balabai says, you know what, I'm going to use it as a mat, as a, you know, a bed covering, that's enough. Michelle Abdin, but a professional tanner who typically, you know, uses his skins, you know, to, for, for, uh, you know, for commercial purposes. And Rashi says, even if today I'll decide to use it as his mat, but tomorrow I'll, you know, decide to fix it up and sell it in the store. Ain machshava matamosan, simply machshava, simply deciding to use it today, that's not enough to make it uh, a kli to regard it as a utensil for a tumor. Okay, so we have the difference between a balabais and a professional. What about a Ganav and a Gazan? They stole some skins from someone. Shal Ganav machshav As soon as the Ganav, Ganav is a fellow who comes discreetly, you know, uh, uh, and steals, you know, quietly. A Gazan is a fellow who, you know, uh, steals outright. Um, so by a Ganav, 
the victim has no clue, no idea who did it. Came middle of the night, quietly, right? So Machshavah Metamosan, there was a, a Yush, the owner sort of gave up on it, and therefore the, the Ganav's, you know, uh, uh, thinking, his planning, has an effect on the status of the of the material, because it's his now, it's it's, uh, it's the Ganav's. Whereas Shal Gazlam, who confronts his victim and steals it outright, in which case the victim is aware of the identity of the ga- of the Gazlan. He plans on going after him. In Machshava Metamos, there's no use. She's not giving up on it. So therefore, the Gazlan has no ability to change his status through his Machshava. He's not an owner. Only an owner can, you know, affect the item. Reb Shimon Oimer the other way around. Chilav Advar. We gotta switch it. A person is more likely to give up by a Gazlan who actually confronted him outright. Right? Shal Gazlan Machshava Metamos. So when it comes to a, a gazlan, if the the, the gazlan had a machshava to now use it as, as a mat, he is regarded as the owner. Because in the case of a gazlan, the, the former owner gave up on it. He has no plans on going after the gazlan. Right? Shal gazlan machshava metamosan, but shal ganav, who uh, apparently does not have the same degree of, of uh, brazenness and... and, and Confidence as a goslin, right? He comes quietly at night when nobody's watching. So here the owner hopes to catch up to him one day. He does not have yush. He doesn't give up on it. And therefore, the ganav is not considered an owner. Ain machshava metamosan, so his machshava has no effect. Lefi, oh, lefi, shalom, you see, I show because there was no yush on account of the owner. Bottom line, the shmamino, we prove from here, that yush is a big factor at play when it comes to a ganav and a goslin. Yush kana. That's a kasha arv yasev. It says, we don't reckon with yush. By Ganav and Gazel. Amr Leach, my skin was speaking. Kigan Shekitzen. So Rabbi Yisav responds. It's not just Yish that happened. Kigan Shekitzen. He sort of trimmed it. That's a, a drastic change, a material change. It's called Shini Masa. There was a material change in the item. So all agree when there is a Shini Masa with a Yish, of course, that affects change of ownership. Maska for Rabbi Rav Chanan. How can you say he physically altered it, he trimmed it? We're speaking about a itzba. A, you know, a table cover or something, right? The itzba ain't shrikha kitsua. Nobody trims that. You don't need to trim it to make a tummy. Because just a plain skin can be used as a tablecloth. So although, you know, sometimes you know, people do it for ornamental purposes, but it's not necessary. You don't need it to... Trigger the, the tumma status. It's not called Mokam Shein Chasar Malacha. In a case where you know material enhancement, change in the in the actual item is not necessary. It's not right, not required, then you don't need it to trigger a tumma. Machshava Mitamasan simply Machshava, that mental designation Mitamasa triggers the tumma. Yeish Chasar Malacha, when you need to still fix it up, ain't Machshava Mitamasa, there the designation mental Machshava doesn't do anything. Except for the itzba, which is sort of tricky. It's something which typically people do. Sometimes they do, you know, uh, enhance it by trimming it or whatever, but it's not necessary. And therefore, even though it's, it technically is lacking, it's mechusar, kitsua, it still needs to be trimmed, but the machshava is enough to make a tummy because the, the, the trimming is not a necessary feature. So the question is that um, if we are speaking about a tablecloth, a table covering, which doesn't need this uh, this mass to make it usable, so even if the the ganav, you're telling me the ganav did this sort of trim, he trimmed it, he changed it. If it's not needed, if it's not necessary. That's not considered a, sh- a shinimasa. He hasn't really transformed the item. The item was perfectly fine without it, and without him, and without his input. So bottom line is that the, it seems that the only reason why there was a sort of transfer of ownership, which empowered, the, empowered and enabled the Ganav and the Gazlan to um, affect the Tumah status, to trigger the Tumah, is because of Yush. Shirimasa here is a non-factor. So apparently you see you is just kind. Elama Rava says like this. You're right. Hi Milsa, this question Kashiba Rabba. Lirav Yasef. Or Virav Yasef. Rabba had asked Rav Yasef. They had this difficulty, this thing 
outstanding for 22 years. Esrim v'tarat in shnin v'lifrika wasn't wasn't uh, resolved. It's a good kasha. At Yosef, Rav Yosef Bereshit. Until when? Rav Yosef, after Rabbah's passing, Rav Yosef became the Rosh Yeshiva, and then he had to after the Shemayu Park, and he found an answer. Again, the question was, according to Rav Yosef, Shinoi does not change his status when it comes to Ogadam, and Ogadam doesn't give it to him. He's not kind of through it. So why over here? By the uh, skins, by the leathers, used as tablecloths, so we say the Yush works. Uparkin answers like this. In addition to Yush, there's another factor. Fine, not Shini Maisa, we already nixed that, but there is a another type of Shini, another type of change, a very serious change. Change of name. It underwent a name change, a function change. Shini Hashem. It turned from a skin to a tablecloth. Kishini Maisa Dumb, it's regarded like a physical change. A name change is a change, change of fun, a functional change, a change of essence. Shini mice in my time. Why when something undergoes a physical change, do we say it works? Hasam. Mi kore mashta Initially they were just, you know, let's say, uh, raw wood, now turn into a, a, a piece of furniture. A drastic change. It's a visible change. Well, guess what? Shini Hashem nami. When something goes through a, a name change, a designation change, a functional change, that's just as drastic and just as significant. Mikor Korle Mashcha, initially it was called a piece of leather, a piece of skin, Vashta Avarza. Now, Avarza Rashi says is Aramaic for a tablecloth. It turned into a tablecloth. That's a serious transformation. So that gives it to the Gazlam. So it's not just because of the Yush, it's because it went through this Shini Hashem. So bottom, let's just recap the dab before you just conclude another few lines, but let's just recap. So bottom line is, if something goes through a shini ma'ase, which was necessary to be done, then we call that a, 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 a shini, which is kaina. What does kaina mean? The God of the Gazan sort of acquires it to the extent that he um, can affect its status, to the extent that uh, perhaps it affects his, uh, you know, his payments of, of you know, Basically, he doesn't have to look for the actual item. He can, you know, repay the owner, the value. That's enough, etc. What about uh, a shinu de mamela? You know, it, it went from a sheep to a ram. So something which happened naturally, natural progressive, natural progression. There is a machlekes amaraim. Whether that's considered shinu. <laughs> then we have shinu Hashem, which we just concluded is regarded like shinu ma'isa, just as drastic. And then yush on itself. Well, that's a question. Okay, so one more question. In fact, the Gemara, have a high very Morish. Uh, you know, you tell me Shini Hashem is something to, to be reckoned with. It's so significant that it, it affects a change of ownership. Morish. What about the uh, story with the beam? The Ika Shini Hashem. It underwent a Shini Hashem. How? The Mikora Kshura Vashta Talula. Initially, it was called a beam, and now it's called a uh, part of the roof, a joist on the uh, on the on the ceiling. With Tanan, and we have a Mishnah which doesn't reckon with this uh, uh, sort of name change. Alamorish Hagazel Shabbat Nevi'biru. There's a Takana, a stolen beam which was placed inside the mansion. Shino Etel Damov, so the victim can only claim compensation. He can't ask for the beam back. But Takana says Shavim to make it, you know, easier for the you know the uh, perpetrator to do teshuva. So rather than requiring him to knock down this building, he'll just, you know, pay in cash. There's a special takana, tama. That's only because we pay takana sashav the special takana, which enables it. Halavachi. But without this takana, he would have to give back the actual halavachi, ha, hadar ba'ini, he'd have to return the actual beam. Why? What happened to Shini Hashem? Change of name, change of designation. Amar Ab Yasef, no, Marish, Shmayalav, a beam, even when it's in the building, it's still called a beam. A joist. Is called joist at the lumber yard, a joist inside your, your ceiling. The Sanya, we have a raya, based on a Pasuk in Yechazkel describing the Beis Hamikdash. Tzloyis Abayis, and what does that mean? Elam Hamalatatin. You know, it's like the trim, the casing around the door, the doors and the windows. But even what is that? Elam Marishais, these are the beams, the joists. So clearly they're called Marishais even once they're built in. So apparently, uh, it's not really called Eshini Hashem, uh, and uh, if not for the special Takana Sashav, you would have to return the actual joys, the actual beam. Rabzeir I'll give you a new turret. Why it doesn't work by the beam? Shino Yachazel Briyasai. 
Bishini Hashem, we have a Shini. You know, the, the reason why he's not kind of the beam is because even, let's say, Shini Hashem is drastic enough to make it his. But let's say, the, you know, they demolish the house. So this joist, which sort of was now called a part of the building, it goes back, it reverts back to its earlier name. That's called a beam. Once again. So that, apparently that's not a permanent, even though it underwent a Shini Hashem, it's not a permanent change. It's a Shini Hashem, which is Chayzel Briyasa, which reverts back to its original name. And therefore, it's not sufficient for a Kenyan of a Gazlam, as opposed to the um, skins and the, you know, the leathers there. Rashi says, once it turns into a tablecloth, nobody's ever going to call it a skin again. Okay, we'll continue with Hashem tomorrow. All the best to you on Aslacha Rabbah.